In this video, we'll look at algebraic models of polynomial functions. So the technical definition for a polynomial function is a function that looks like this. Uh, it's a bit of a mouthful to say, but we'll just kind of notice a few patterns here. Uh, first of all, polynomial function could be made up of multiple terms. So the terms are separated by plus or minus signs. So here we would have multiple terms. Uh, so that's their first sort of clue that it's a polynomial function. Uh, notice here that each of these terms has a variable, and the variable, there's only one variable. The um, the x values are the variables. We'll get to the a's in, in just a minute, but you'll notice that there's an x value here, 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 and here. You might be wondering, how come there isn't an x value at the end? We could technically write a uh, an x variable, uh, sorry, a variable of x, uh, having an exponent of 0. And you'll notice the pattern here is that the exponents on the variable decrease by one every time. So we started with n, went to n minus one, n minus two, down to two, down to one, and down to zero. We typically don't write that x to the zero in there because typically, um, you know, a number to the power of zero is just equal to one. So this is multiplying by one. Uh, so if, if you wanted to kind of think about it as being there, you could, but we certainly don't need it there. Now, the other thing that we should mention here is that these uh, a values are coefficients. So they're values in front of the x in this term, in this case, sorry. Uh, it could be any variable, by the way. It could be a, a y, it could be an a. It doesn't matter what the variables are. We typically use x, but it doesn't have to be. There we go, coefficients. So all of these a with a subscript are just indicating that there are coefficients in front of each of those variables. And we'll look at a few examples shortly. Uh, the last one here, I kind of mentioned this one was a little bit different. Uh, we call this term the constant term. It's the term that we're adding or subtracting at the end. Again, if you really wanted to, you could think of it as having an x to the exponent of 0, but you don't need to. So that's this sort of formal technical definition. Uh, let's get at a couple of examples, maybe, where you can see um, see what that looks like. So here are some examples. Here is uh, an example of a polynomial. So it kind of fits the pattern. We have, um, when I say it fits the pattern, it's just this part of the pattern, but that's okay. We have a variable. That variable is x. We have some coefficients, and we're kind of going in descending order of exponents on our variable. Again, you can put that x to the 0 in there if you like, if it helps, but you certainly don't need it. So that's an example of a polynomial function. And that kind of function, as you've seen before, is called a linear function. We can also look here at uh, a quadratic function. So you can see it has an x squared term, a negative 2x term, and a positive 1. So the, co the exponent on the x here was a 2, and the exponent's a 1. And then it's a 0. And typically, we would write them in that order from the highest exponent down to the lowest. But it's it's not wrong to have this polynomial as negative 2x plus x squared plus 1 and just changing the order around. And then the last one here is, uh, sorry, I should mention, this is a quadratic function. So we, we would create a parabola. And again, you've done a lot of work with parabolas. So that should look familiar. Um, and, and we can kind of keep going with these patterns uh, indefinitely. You can see here, the only thing I've added now was a cubic term. So I have this x to the power of 3. This would give us a cubic function. We've kind of dabbled a little bit with those so far, but haven't really gotten into a lot of detail. So, um, And then we still have the squared term. We have the linear term. And then we have the constant term. So there's our constants are at the end. Maybe I'll, I'll just circle those. So these are our constants. And then we have our terms with the variables here. Now, one of the things that uh, you know I mentioned earlier is that we can continue this on. So the polynomial function is really an entire class of functions where there are, um, you know, it's a little bit different from quadratic functions where all the functions kind of look the same. We can have these quadratic functions, we can have cubic functions, we and we can keep going. We can look at uh, a function with an x to the power of four. And, and see what that looks like. And we'll talk a little bit, maybe on the next page, about uh, some of the terminology associated with that. 
so here's a, a new piece of terminology is uh, the degree of a polynomial. So oftentimes we refer to the degree of a polynomial. What that means, it's the highest exponent on the variable in the polynomial. So here's a polynomial. It's, uh, it has an x to the 4 in it, an x cubed. So it's, it, you can see it has that pattern that we saw on the previous page. When we talk about the degree of the polynomial, we're looking for the term that has the variable with the highest exponent. So here, this term here, this negative 7x squared term, has a, uh, a variable, sorry, an exponent. Let me reword that. A variable with an exponent of 2. And when we look for the degree of the polynomial, we're looking for the largest exponent on the variable. So here, uh, the largest exponent is a 4. So this polynomial has degree 4. We call that a fourth degree polynomial. And that, that tells us a little bit more about what this looks like. So if, if, the, if the largest exponent were a 2, so if it was a quadratic function, that 2 tells us that that polynomial would be a parabola. So it gives us some general idea about the shape of the graph and some of the characteristics of the graph. And the same is true, although we won't get into the degree 4 polynomials very much, um, but the degree of the polynomial gives us a lot of information about what that polynomial looks like. And we can see that down here in the table. So again, this is just the table from the previous page. A linear function have this sort of characteristic, characteristic, pardon me, f at x equals ax plus b or mx plus b, kind of look like this. So if we look for the degree here, the degree is just the exponent on the uh, sorry, the largest exponent on the variable. Well, there's only one variable here, and typically the exponent isn't actually written down. Let me just fix that. Let's see if I can. No. Uh, the exponent isn't written down here, but we could put an exponent of 1 on that x, and that wouldn't be wrong. So the degree of that polynomial is just equal to 1. If we move on to the next one here, the quadratic, we can see the highest exponent on the variable is a 2. So we say that this polynomial has degree 2. Sometimes we use the word order instead of degree. Maybe I'll just jot that down. Uh, so sometimes we'll use the word order instead of degree. So this would be a, a, a polynomial with order 2. So you might see that occasionally. And then the last one here, again, we're looking at the variables. The variables are the x's. We're looking for the one with the highest exponent. You can see that's right here. So this polynomial has degree 3. Whatever that exponent is on the, uh, the largest exponent on the variable, that's the degree of the polynomial. So that's an introduction to some of the terminology and uh, some of the functions that you'll see when we talk about polynomials.